Hi guys, happy Friday. Just waiting for Mark to join. So I just posted something interesting on my stories today about what have you achieved during quarantine? I have been biking, I have been baking, I have been cooking, and uh, finally went out last weekend to do some boating. So please tell me what have you changed in your routine? What have you tried? I uh, have really enjoyed being live on Instagram. I find it's a way to connect to my viewers. Oh, there's Mark. Okay, let me add him. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Okay. Great. Waiting for Mark. Should be here in a second. It's connecting. Hi, Mark. Welcome. Hey, Jessica. How are you? Can you hear me? I'm good. You want to angle your camera a little down so we can see you? Mm -hmm. Perfect. For a little, a little pixel. Yeah. There we go. Okay, great. How are you? Happy Friday. <laughs> Thank you. Can you, you can hear me, right? <laughs> you make this a little louder. I was just saying to our audience uh, that I posted something interesting on stories. What have you done during your quarantine? Have you uh, gone out to bike? Have you exercised? Have you got some vitamin D? What have you done uh, during your time in quarantine that's different from your normal routine? Uh, this is where I spend my exercise time. This is my, my Peloton bike. Um, nice. that's right. uh, actually, I, I, I get on it six times a week, so that's my exercise. Uh, I'd like to get out more, though. I feel like I get busy during the day, so uh, I need to go on some more walks. And be more and be active in addition to the Peloton, but that's my baseline: thirty minutes, thirty, forty minutes of exercise a day. Nice. And you've been quarantined yeah. for the past three months as well. What's that? You've been quarantining on Long Island for the past three months as well. I have been actually. I, I come into the city every week to get my mail, but generally, I've made my home out Long Island for the past three months, which. Uh, it's different for me. I've lived in the city for, you know, a good uh, 20 of the last 25 years. So mm -hmm. it's uh, strange for me to be a suburbanite. Have you been back since the looters and protesters have kind of trashed our beloved city? Uh, unfortunately, no. I'm probably going in tomorrow morning, actually, to uh, to get my mail and a and, uh, quick oh. drive through of uh, assess, you know, how the city's doing. Yeah, it's kind of terrible as we were just beginning to feel a positive vibe that we're reopening and uh, getting back to a little more normalcy that now these stores have boarded up. It almost looks like we're in a war zone. Um, what do you think? Well, it, it, it upsets me to see, you know, being, you know, a city person for as long as I've been. Um, you know, I think, though, I try to remain optimistic, so I feel like you have to hit rock bottom before you can start to rebuild up. And you yeah. know, unfortunately, the the you know the looting and the the rioting, um, which was a minor part really of uh, you know I think what were mostly peaceful protests for for you know a really good cause and a great reason. Um, you know, I think the media likes to to blow that up. Not to say that it didn't happen, but um, you know, I. I I think that's that's just uh, the bad part that came out of it. There were a lot of good parts, and and I think the city will really start to rebuild and you know start to get back to the city we know and miss. It's interesting. I've actually spoken to a number of landlords that I work with in the East Village, and luckily they were untouched and unscathed because they're on side streets. Um, mm -hmm. However, our our other landlords in you know Soho and perhaps Upper East Side on um, the more expensive commercial blocks have been tainted. Um, but yeah. let's introduce who you are and, and, and to tell everyone how we connected. So Mark Lawrence is the principal at Worldwide Land Transfer. 
focusing on title. He has long time experience in real estate, both as a broker and on the other side. And Mark, tell us what's title? Why do we need it? Well, as you know, Jessica says, I've had a long history in real estate. It's probably close to 25 years now. I started my career as an, as an attorney. Uh, I practiced for about six, seven years. Um, it was a good background for everything that I do. I probably was not the best fit uh, to be an attorney. I then spent five years at the Corcoran Group. So we share you know, <laughs> in common, actually. From 2001 to 2006, I sold residential properties and really enjoyed working at Corcoran and being a part of uh, the team there. Um, and then I gravitated in around 2006 to title insurance, uh, which I found to be the perfect kind of fit for everything in my experience. You know, really kind of title is kind of uh, the unspoken or the unknown part of the real estate process. Um, other than people thinking that title people used to have the best tickets for sports stuff and um, you know, it invites places, um, you know, the, the function of title insurance actually is important and really, you know, you can't get your deals closed without, you know, good title insurance people, uh, working on them. Um, you know, it is an insurance product. It's not, uh, the most exciting or sexy thing to talk about, but, you know, uh, where I think it's important where it fits in really, uh, with most of my friends in real estate is that, you know, we kind of, you know, really help take that, you know, take push the ball into the end zone, uh, mm -hmm. kind of get the deal closed and uh, deal with any of the issues, you know, from the contract to closing. You know, that's really where we excel in, you know, helping deals get closed is identifying issues, resolving them, and kind of helping the attorneys, uh, the parties, and, you know, the real estate agents, most importantly, the real estate agents getting paid at closing. Right. Uh, I understand the hard work that they put in and I'm appreciative having sat in that, in that seat, uh, you know, to get that commission check, people will see a lot of, you know, zeros sometimes on that check and be like, Oh, they have the easy job. They opened up the doors. It is by no means an easy job. It's probably the hard job uh, of all the parties involved. Yeah, Mark. So thank you for mentioning Corcoran. I've been in real estate myself for the past 11 years and just joined Corcoran. Uh, right before COVID happened. So honestly, it's been great to be part of the Corcoran group. They've really opened up their educational facilities to us virtually, learned a lot about Instagram and Facebook marketing, as well as advertising and other ways to reach out to our clients and help our landlords virtually. So how have you found the market when you first started uh, 2001 20 to 2006 to now? Um, do you think we're resilient because of all the ebbs and flows we go to. Um, obviously, we all love the vibe and the energy of New York City. That's why we're drawn to it. We've got Broadway, the best artists, the best museums. What, where do you foresee real estate post-COVID short-term, within the year, long-term? There's, there's a few things you mentioned there. Education, actually, and corporate and with the education, you know, really was something uh, that I found. I was an attorney. I didn't think that I would necessarily need it, but Corcoran has a great training and education program. And now, you know, back then, uh, social media wasn't a part of it, but didn't even exist. Now, you know, the training for that is really uh, part of it. And it's funny, I think back to when I trained at Corcoran in 2001, I actually was in the November 2001 training class. It was two months, at, it was the first training class after 9-11. So, wow. uh, you know, uh, people thought, you know, New York real estate was, uh, was dead and nobody was ever going to buy after the terrorist attacks. And here I went, I switched careers. You know, I became an agent at Corcoran. I had no salary. I used to bartend actually at Michael Jordan's steakhouse. Oh, wow. Control, uh, for some, uh, for my child support money. Um, but I believed that I could make money as a real estate agent. I believed um, in, um, you know, uh, I believed in the real estate market in the Manhattan you know, market where I primarily work. So what I quickly saw was in you know, the end of the year, people started, things started to settle down. And, and I'm using this as an analogy, really, kind of to where we are with COVID. Um, and I guess 2008, the financial crisis, another kind of analogy. But um, and then come January of 2002, the market really started to take off. And I really only worked in an up market at Corcoran from 2002 to 2006. 
uh, prices really, you know, increased. I think, you know, the city kind of reset financial, you know, we, people were fine. We just had this strange situation in that we had, you know, the terrorist attacks and people were nervous and people, you know, were concerned. And I think once people started to see that people were going to stay in the city and people were uh, comfortable living in Manhattan and Manhattan had, you know, tremendous amount of things to offer, you know, they really started to buy, especially prices declined a bit. So right. take, you know, and make that analogy to now. So when we went into this situation in the middle of March, I remember March 13th, my, well, Friday the 13th was my last day in the office. Um, you know, I left and really, you know, I remember my mindset that day was that, you know, the market was really good. We were getting excited for the spring market. Actually, the February market was, was, was good, January, February. Um, you know, there was buyers out there and we have, were in a very low interest rate environment. And I think that's mm -hmm. key to, you know, the recovery of, you know, um, the real estate market, the residential real estate market. So we were very busy throughout March and into April and May, primarily with refinances. So a lot of people were refinancing their mortgages. Rates were, you know, high twos, low threes. And, um, you know, people were taking advantage of that. And that low interest rate market has, has stayed. So now, unfortunately, from March, you know, middle of March until now, agents have been unable to show show apartments. And, and that's right. really slowed the market down, you know, significantly. But, you know, what I've started to see in the last two weeks is really kind of a little more traction. So I think people are getting, you know, starting to see that hopefully we're going to get over that hurdle. Interest rates are low. There's, I mean, supply is constrained, but only because people took stuff off the market. I think in the next right. couple of weeks, that will come back onto the market. And, you know, I think because the interest rates are low, prices are, you know, going to be a little bit, and I don't expect major discounts, but, um, you know, but if you're looking for a well-priced apartment, I'm encouraged to see something that we, you know, this week, actually, we saw, saw a, um, New transaction, uh, it's a, a penthouse apartment, uh, Manhattan, $20 million. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is uh, hopefully going into contract. It's not quite in contract yet, but, you know, that's a positive sign. And we've, again, seen, you know, start to see a, you know, slow flow of deals. And I think once agents show, we'll go back to, you know, the market it was. Yes, I do think some of the demand for families and people that eventually plan to move to the suburbs, I think that accelerated a lot of that. And, you know, but that's helping the, the suburb market. So right. uh, real estate, you know, the financial markets are in good shape. And I think, you know, that the agents are going to have opportunities to make money and be successful, especially if they're doing stuff, you know, getting their name out there and their face out there, like you're doing, you know, right. some really creative stuff with the cooking and, you know, uh -huh. I'm at that and uh and taking notice of what people are doing because uh right. that's what drives kind of opportunities now is is being out there and, and showing yourself in a in a positive light and in a, a fun and knowledgeable way i think so because we can't get physically in front of our clients so this is another platform where they can see our personalities how we work and our knowledge it's almost a better platform in that in that way um so show us your shirt mark what does it say? Uh, it, I, I dress for the occasion. I did put I, on my Michigan so shirt. Other thing Mark and I have in common, we're both alum, we're both Wolverines. So let's talk a little shop. What do you think is going to happen to the football in the fall if uh, classes don't start in Ann Arbor? Do you think something will fill its void? People will still tune in to see perhaps old games what do you think well it scares me to think uh you know there won't be a college football season i'm, I'm actually more of a college sports fan and obviously a michigan fan I um, hope. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely uh so um i'm optimistic that there will be a college football season and that uh, the big house uh if you've never had the opportunity to take in a football college football game i suggest uh you uh, uh pick a fall nice fall weekend um, and come to uh, come out to Michigan to Ann Arbor tailgate and it's a really it's you know very spirited fun time um, and I know Jessica could uh, has good fond memories of that uh, as do uh, most of my uh, fellow Wolverine alumni so I do think if if the students aren't back 
I don't think that uh, the season stands a very good chance. I don't think they're going to play in an empty stadium. Uh, but if the students come back, I think there'll be some, I don't know if it's going to be filled the stadium, but I'm mm -hmm. optimistic. And of course, as a, uh, you know, true Michigan fan, um, my only hope and dream every night I go to bed, I put my head on my pillow and I, I say, I hope that we beat Ohio State this, this year. That, uh, that uh, here's running. It's painful to me. Yes, exactly. We have some Wolverines watching us today. Thank I you. I so blue down there. I think that's <laughs> uh, Rob Rosenberg, actually. Yeah, Rob, how are you? I'm supposed to talk to Rob at three, so. All right, Rob, we'll get to you. <laughs> um, so I have some typical questions I like to ask all of my special guests on my weekly lunch and learn. What have you discovered about yourself during quarantine? Uh, I've discovered that I'm a lot more comfortable talking on Zoom. And, um, you know, I traditionally did a lot of events in the real estate space. I've had Rain Real Estate Insiders Network. We used to do a lot of large events. Um, uh, I do traditionally actually a lot of classes, and that's a place where we've put a lot of our time and efforts into. And now we've started Worldwide Education, which is our educational platform. It's a real estate you know, school that teaches continuing legal ed for lawyers, continuing education for real estate agents, but, mm. you know, was generally an uncomfortable live speaker. I am a nervous um-er, and I generally don't like speaking in front of uh, people live. I've forced myself over the years to be comfortable, but I actually really enjoy doing stuff on Zoom, and Instagram is my second Instagram live. I did one with a wow. couple as well so i'm looking forward to doing more of this stuff and uh i even actually watched the training video on how best to present yourself on camera so um you know i'm hoping that you know what i've learned is maybe they have a second life you know more on camera and in front of people uh and being comfortable doing that uh i've learned that uh, what's that the more you do the better it gets it, it's very true actually um and that's one thing i i suggest to people and you know, I don't know if it was technology fear or fear of seeing yourself, you know, hearing yourself live. Everybody hates the sound of their own voice. Mm -hmm. But I think we're all in that boat. Uh, just jump in into the pool like I did here with, with Jessica and, uh, you know, and, and do it. And the more you do it, the more you get comfortable, the better you get, you know, uh, at that. Uh, I spent about 15, I'm going to I'm going to uh, be truthful here and say I spent 15 minutes actually beforehand trying to get the right angle so that I would look best on camera. I moved around my little 50th birthday backdrop thing. Um, so, you know, that's something, you, have, you know, these are things you have to be aware of, of how best to present yourself. And right. so I've learned a lot in, you know, the COVID thing. And here was something that I learned when you came on, or when we came on only get half a screen so mm -hmm. when I practiced here and had myself in the full screen you know I was higher up on the screen so exactly you know so these are you know these are the things I did had no knowledge of before COVID and now I'm very aware of you know screen presence and you know and how you appear how you sound what's behind you etc so, Mark, we have a request for that training video. So anyone that wants it, please DM us. We'll be glad to send it to you or any other tips in terms of going live. So, Mark, my second of three questions that I ask all of my weekly Lunch and Learn guests, how has your daily routine changed? Will it be different in the future? Of course, working from home. Do you get up, get your coffee, work out, and then head to your computer? What, what has changed? So I, um, I definitely... I'm on a routine. I wake up, I, I try to exercise in the morning uh, and I try to get to my computer or, you know, this is my become my office of uh, my longtime girlfriend's house. I set up a you know private spot. It's quiet in here. Uh, I could focus. Nobody comes in and bothers me. I'm fortunate. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I actually feel for people that have young children in school because uh, having to educate and get your kids, you know, educated through Zoom, you know, has been a big challenge. I think for a lot of people, i Fortunately, I have a 19-year-old daughter, and uh, and my girlfriend has uh, 23, 27, and 29. So we don't deal; we're not dealing with younger children. So, but I definitely, you know, next week. Oh, <laughs> What's that? 
Sorry about that. Someone was calling. That's okay. Um, I'm thinking next week, you know, or not that we can go back because we're not, we're not really till phase two, but, uh, you know, I will go to the office, I think maybe, you know, two, three times a week at most, but I'm going to spend uh, two days probably at home. I still have my apartment in the city, so I have to figure out how I'm going to work that in, if it's going to be working from there or working from here, um, you know, but I, so my, I'm going to change my routine a bit. I think there's still a need for having an office and a place to go. But I do think a lot of people have learned to work at home and learned, you know, that the technology is nothing to fear and that they can get stuff done at home. So I think it's really going to hopefully balance people out uh, in terms of, uh, you know, work home life. I think in Manhattan, you know, and New York, where the cost of living is so high, we all felt we always had to be working all the time. And mm -hmm. that probably hasn't changed so much, but we could also, you know, be at home and enjoy some of the things that family and, and home have to offer. Right. It's almost an insight into what I've been doing uh, for 11 years, working from home in and out of office space. Um, it's a challenge because you've got other things going on. You've got noise. You've got the temptation of the fridge and phone calls. But I find it's good to have a balance of going into a physical office, but the flexibility of working from home if you need to. So last of three questions. What are your thoughts about your home have changed? Have you looked at it differently to think, oh, gee, I'm able to work from home more than I thought I would be without the distractions? Mm -hmm. um, this is something that you and I talked about, actually, especially, you know, you're out in Long Island. I think now uh, I see your beautiful trees in the background. If I was to swing my chair, you know, you would see the trees <laughs> in my chair. So, you know, I, I've realized about myself that, as much as I do love the city and the energy and being in the city, I do love getting out of the city and especially the suburbs of New York, you know, do have a lot to offer. One of the things, you know, being here on the South shore of Long Island, we're close to the beach. So uh, enjoyed the beach club because we don't plan on going anywhere. It's about 10 minutes from, from uh, the house here. And uh, I spent last week on a Saturday, Sunday uh, at the beach. I didn't go near the water, but I sat in the sand. It was, you know, quiet it was peaceful um and it was you know really great and i think that's certainly some of the um you know things that you know especially being a new yorker and i know obviously a lot of people have homes out east that's something you know that actually i was looking to buy a home potentially out east i started looking a couple of weeks before uh covid19 uh came into play um that's something i'm considering uh i, I want the best of both worlds and i think in new york I think uh, you can have the best of, of everything. You can have the energy and all the amazing things that Manhattan and the boroughs have to offer and all of the beauty and all of the, you know, the nature and, and things that, uh, um, you know, that the suburbs have to offer. And I think that that's something that uh, I need that balance in my life. And I think, um, you know, others may find, find the same thing that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, enjoy all that New York, you know, state has to offer, even upstate, there's really, you know, uh, a lot of beautiful places for hiking and, um, you know, with uh, lakes and, and stuff like that upstate. There's the beach, you know, at Long Island, uh, Westchester has, you know, beautiful places too. So, um, you know, there's, I would say, and, and listen, don't, don't rule out New Jersey or Connecticut. You know, there's a lot of great places, but, you know, those and the people that I know that have made their, their living in the city, don't leave, don't abandon the city either. and Don't give it up because uh, we need you. And, uh, you know, that's what made it so great. Um, right. You know, and I hope that they, those people stay and those people, you know, we rebuild, you know, what was or go back to what was great about Manhattan. Right. New Yorkers are resilient. Um, interestingly enough, about this time of year, bringing up beach, we were drinking rosé all day during the summer at Navy Beach. <laughs> day watching golden hour sunset uh do you remember that fun day all the real yeah. estate shows were together maybe in montauk yeah, that, yeah that's a great place you know if you haven't been out to montauk um actually we're working uh now we're getting a new a new deal somebody's buying some you know house in montauk the houses need some redoing but the land is great and that's what you know they feel the value in, in montauk but Yes, Jessica and I last summer, I think it was in July, we were <laughs> at a party. I'll put in a plug for 
for Eckler Cap and my friend Dan Hilpert. I know he's not on here, but uh, they throw a great party. Uh, it's a luxury car rally that goes from uh, a dealership in Nassau County and about 100 people drive their really cool luxury sports and classic cars out to Gurney's and uh, there's a party at Gurney's and then we uh, often do the after party at Navy Beach. And those were fun. Those are fun times. I'm going to miss that this summer, not yeah. being, doing that. And uh, I'm a big fan of Summer in the Bottle, which is uh, the Wolfer Rosé. Uh, <laughs> do a whole show about Rosé. I actually came with props. I'm a big tequila person. So oh. um, uh, I don't know if anyone's had this tequila before, but uh, Clase Azul. Uh, nice. Before actually the... Um, uh, COVID period hit us. I had planned to do uh, the first event for what I call He 19. It was a uh, tequila aficionados club. Uh, we had a plan for uh, La Biblioteca, which is a uh, restaurant in Manhattan that has a extensive tequila collection. So if you have interest in tequila, um, it's uh, one of my passions and one of the things I like to drink. So reach out to me and uh, get on that list because I'm looking forward to actually having our launch of He 19 um, my tequila club, probably in 2021. Oh, Robert's recommending the Blanco Casa Azul. <laughs> well, how come I'm not on that list, Mark? I think you were. I don't know. You got definitely got the invite. Well, Mark, thank you so much. I know you're busy closing title, running title, clearing up title all over New York. Does anyone have any questions for Mark or myself regarding the New York City, New York market? Uh, please let us know and DM us or make some comments on our respective Instagram accounts. And I um, hope you have a great weekend, Mark. Thank you for taking your time out of your day to join me here. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. I really appreciate you inviting me and, uh, you know, sharing this, uh, you know, this segment with me and, uh, you know, doing what you do. And definitely reach out to Jessica if you're looking to buy um, in New York, in Manhattan, in Brooklyn, et cetera. She's an excellent agent. Uh, of course, she's a Michigan grad, so we know she's smart. You uh -huh. know, she's definitely someone you want on your side you want to work with. So yeah. thanks, Larry Ross, Rob Rosenberg. Actually, I'll make a plug for Larry Ross, who's on here, and he's got a, a thing called Real Estate Zoom Schmooze. So rezoomschmooze.com um, if you want to check that out. It's a lot of real estate people who are kind of getting together on Zoom and making connections. So that's I'd love to find that. Thank you. And so this will stay in our live video for the next 24 hours. Then it'll move to the stories and it will be housed in IGTV. So if you need to take a look back here, please feel free and reach out to Mark or myself for any questions or needs. Thanks, Mark. Have a Thanks. great day. Be well. Look forward to seeing you live soon in person. You did great. I hope to see you in person soon as well. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend.